All right, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we talked about two masses that were pulled by a force at a constant velocity, and we wanted to find the tension between them. And we found out that the tension between them was exactly half of the applied force when the masses were equal. Okay, so this is the same example in terms of the applied force, but now this is going to change things up just a little bit. So in this problem, two boxes are attached with a rope, and they are pulled by a force of 200 newtons at a constant velocity. The first box, the red one, has a mass one half of the other one, the green one. So what is the tension in the rope between them? So now the question is, is this just going to be 100 again? Is it just going to be half? Does that matter that I changed my masses? Well, let's take a look here. It says the red box has half the mass of the green. So if I made my green box uh, 2m, I can just make this one m, right? This one has half the mass of the green one. And we want to find out what the tension is. So to do that, we have to redraw our free body diagrams down here, okay? So the first force that I have here is the force applied, which is 200 newtons. And we know that it's still going to apply uh, some type of a uh, tension force between them, and they're going to be identical, because the third law says that they have to be identical. The question is, uh, are they going to be the same as before? Are they both just going to be 100, like in the last example? So I'm going to have these two equal and opposite forces here. Now the, the question is, the question is, are the frictional forces the same? In other words, is this frictional force here the same as this frictional force here? Okay, okay. so here's my force of tension here. This is going to be identical to this force of tension here. Okay, and this is, the, this is the mass m. This is the mass 2m. My force of friction here, this is the force of friction on the first mass, or mass 1, and the force of friction on the second one here. Okay, so let's go over to the side here and, and talk about the forces of friction real quick. The force of friction in the on the first box, on the red one, is just going to be mu times the normal on the first one, okay? And again, the, the normal is just going to be equal to mg in this case, so it's going to be mu times mg. Because right here, I have my mass here, I'm going to draw these out for you. I'm going to clone this. I have my uh, my mg, my force down here, okay, whatever that is, and I'm going to have a normal that's going to go the other way, okay, because there's no there's no other force forces affecting those, right? So there's my there are my two forces. They should be equal and opposite, roughly. Let's say make them equal and opposite, okay? So there it is. So I just have mg here, and I have force normal here, okay? So now what's going on on this other one over here? This other one has a mass of 2m. So how is that going to change the, the situation here? Well, it's over like this. This one has twice the mass, so it's going to have twice the gravitational force. It's going to have twice the normal force. And it's going to effect effectively double that frictional force too in there. Okay. So I just drew them a little bit bigger just to signify that so you can see it. So this is going to be 2mg down. And this is going to be fn up whatever that is there, but we'll, we'll leave it symbolically for now. So the force of friction 1 here is just um, mu mg, which we know m is just going to be half the mass of the second one. Okay. Now if we look at the force of friction of the second one, it's going to be mu times the normal of the second one. Okay. So the force of the friction of the second one is just going to be mu times 2 mg. Okay, so the force of friction of the second one is going to be 2 mu mg. So what does that say to us? That says that they're definitely not equal and that the force of friction is going to be larger on this one than it is on this one. Okay, so what, how does that affect our, our problem? Well, when we're dealing with these two situations, we can say that the force of friction on the second one is going to be twice the force of friction on the first one, okay? And that's important later on when we come in and start solving these equations. So I'm going to go over to my green here and I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x equals zero, okay? And I'm dealing just with a simple Newton's first law application. So whatever is on the left, the force of the friction, the second one equals the force of the tension. And over here on the right, I'm going to say the sum of the forces and the x equals zero. So whatever's on the left, the force of the tension plus the force of friction one equals force applied. Okay? 
So I'll put all my arrows in there. Oops, I'll put that in green so you can see it. Okay, so how do we go about solving this now? How do we find the tension dealing with, with all of these parameters? Well, I need to get rid of the parameters on this side just like I did before. Okay, so I know that the force of friction 2 equals the force of tension, right? All right, so I can substitute from over here though. I can say the force of friction 2 is also twice the force of friction 1. So I can say twice the force of friction 1 equals FT, right? So I'm just substituting from our original equation over here, right? And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to substitute that into here, into this equation. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with the force of tension plus, instead of saying the force of friction 1, we know that, we know that uh, twice the force of friction 1 equals FT. So if I want to substitute that, I actually have to say the force of friction 1 is going to be the force of tension over 2, right? I'm going to substitute that over into here. So that's going to go over into here, okay? So I'm going to basically say now I have FT over 2 and that equals FA, force applied, okay? So let's keep solving here. I got to combine these into some type of a fraction. So I'm going to keep going down here. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to combine these over here and I'm going to combine these two fractions. So I'm going to say F of T plus F of T over 2 equals FA. So that's going to end up saying 3 over 2 FT. Okay, because remember that's, that's the same as 1 FT plus 1 half FT is 3 halves FT equals force applied, which we know what that is. Okay, so force applied is 200. And so we're going to say FT is going to equal 200, and I'm going to flip that fraction, so I'm going to multiply it times 2 thirds, right? So now my force of tension is going to equal 200 times uh, 2 is 400, and then divided by 3, right? So what's that going to give me when I divide 400 by 3? I'm going to get roughly 133 newtons. 133.3 if you want to keep going with that depending on how many significant digits you started with and you were measuring 133.3 really doesn't matter it's the concept here so that's clearly a different situation and why why would it be more why would it be more than 100 newtons before well basically before they were equally sharing the load now this one is disproportionately stronger than this one so the rope has to now carry not just the mass of this, but also that extra larger frictional force. So that creates a larger tension between them, okay? All right, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.